Hey guys, what's going on? So today, if you would notice, I'm actually in a completely different environment. Normally you'll see me running uh, Mac OS, but today I'm in a virtual environment for Windows. Um, and I'm running this on VirtualBox. And the reason why I'm on Windows is because I want to introduce you to a new little uh, plugin for uh, Excel. And unfortunately, this uh, specific feature only works on Windows. I believe they're going to be coming up something for Linux and, and Mac. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but the extension I'm going to talk to you about is something called Excel Wings. And Excel Wings is going to allow you to go ahead and build your own custom user-defined functions within Excel. So what that means is if you want to have some nice complex functions, you can actually do them in Python and then actually just import them into Excel. And so I'm going to show you how to install this. I'm going to show you how to use it. Um, they actually have some pretty good documentation and it is free to use. So first things first, if you're in Windows, you're going to go ahead and you're going to open up PowerShell. And you're going to right click on here and you're going to go to PowerShell. Once you've done that, I've already got this installed. You're going to go ahead and type in pip install Excel wings. And so with mine, my requirement has already been set. Now, the other thing you're going to do is you have to go ahead and enable this add on. So if you go to their training docs and their support pages, and here are the ex extensive documentation they've got. So just docs.xlwings.org. And you can either use Conda or you can use pip to install it. Now, once you do that, you have to go ahead and put the add-in into your Excel. So to do that, you're just going to type in this command right here, which is Excel Wings add-in install. And you're going to just go to your PowerShell and do that again. So Excel Wings add-in install. And I've already got this. And once you once it goes ahead and processes this, what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and once you have your Excel open over here, so let me just expand this for us to make it nice and big. So once you have this, what it's going to do is going to add this little tab here called Excel Wings. And for the most part, you can leave everything blank. But the only difference with Excel Wings, what you have to do is you have to do a few things. First of all, when you're going to create a file, you're just going to have your Excel file as is. And you're going to go to File, you're going to go to save as and when you actually save it i'm just going to quickly show you something you're going to go and save it as excel macro enabled workbook not excel not xlsx but xlsm you do that and then the second thing you have to do is you have to have your python file that you're going to be using which we're going to walk through in a second in the exact same directory and you have to call it the same thing so you know i've called this book one because i just never changed the name so you see this is called books, book book1.xlsm. You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure that your Python file is also called the exact same thing as well. So I'm going to close these up and now I'm going to show you how this works. So what you do is you actually use this decorator, which is part of the Excel wings file. So I'm going to make this bigger for us to see as well. So let me just go ahead and scroll into this and I will zoom in. All right. So I just went ahead and made this a little bit bigger. Um, I just went and changed the font size for it and because again this is uh, Windows I am using Apple accessories the mouse and keyboard so the scroll thing doesn't work exactly so I just made the font a little bit bigger all right so here's some of the functions we can do so for example if I want to go ahead and take in a value X and Y I want to be able to add those two together and then double it so to do that all I would do once I've gone ahead and written this so I have my I've imported my Excel wings I don't really need pandas in this one. I was fooling around with it, so I don't really need it. Then you write use their decorator, which basically tells Excel Wings and Excel to say this is actually a function below it. So every time you're going to have a new function, you're going to declare this decorator called xw.func. And that's only because we call this xw up here. So now it's easy. All I have to do is I have to go into Excel and I'm going to hit equals double. And now you notice that this actually shows up. So I'm going to hit double sum and then I'm going to hit four and five or six, sorry. So technically this should add the two up and double it. So it should just give me 20. So when I hit enter, what it's going to do is it's actually going in Python and it's running it in the back end and it's actually starting up a server. So it only does this once. And so if I were to go ahead and do this again and I say double sum and then I say, let's say 250, that should give me some big number, 500 because it's 200 plus 50, 250 times two. So we know that works. And if it doesn't work, you're just gonna hit import functions and it'll run this in the background. So this is already running the server, so it's giving me an error. 
but you just hit import functions and it takes the functions that are in this file and it will move them into Excel and make them accessible. So here's another one that I'm actually going to walk you through. Consider we actually have sales. So we have sales for 2019 and 2018 for say month 1 to 12. All right. Now in order to actually compute the percent difference, what you're going to do is you're going to say equal and you're going to say 2019 minus 2018. You're going to put that in brackets. So let's do that. This is how you would normally do it if you were not to use Excel and or the Excel version of doing this the Excel computation to do this and you would get 45% you can copy it down and you're good to go. The other way you can do it is you can just write the function itself in Python here. So for percent change you have your sales which is your new sales and your old sales and you can do the math in here and here now all you're going to do is equal PCT change and then you're just going to say B2 and C2. And so it's going to run it in the back because it is running it this one for the first time and it's done. And I'm really showing you some really easy functions. You know, imagine when you get to using things like loops or ifs or if statements. So if we were to write a command, for example, that says, why don't we do it right now? We'll say that if this sales value here, we'll just move this down here. And let's see if we can just write a small little function. So we're going to write this one together. So what we're going to say is that if this number is greater than 25,000, so if this number is greater than 25,000, then we're basically going to pick a random number between 0 and 1, and we'll multiply it by 10. And I'm honestly just picking this stuff out of nowhere. Otherwise, let's set it to the number itself, so whatever the number is, times 2. All right, so if I were to do this in Excel, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first test to see whether this is greater than 25,000. If it is greater than 25,000, then I'm just going to pick a random number and multiply it by 10. If it's less than 25,000, I'm going to take this number itself and multiply it by 2. You can already see we're starting to add a little bit of complexity and to do this in Excel, it can be done and it's not hard. But once you do it in Python, you can reuse that over and over again in different Excel files. And that's the whole point of this. So why don't we build this function together? So we're going to go into Python and we will call this function something like check number, just because I can't think of a better thing right now or a name right now. We're going to pass an X and X is going to be the value that it that represents uh, this column here. So now we're going to say we're going to say if so let's get rid of all of this stuff. If X is greater than 25,000, then we'll say X is equal to random int. So now we're just going to go up here and we're going to quickly import random. Import random. All right, so I actually have to go and change this a little bit. I just said um, from random, import random, and then I just said random, which is going to give you something between 0 and 1 and then times 10. And so now when you go ahead and run that down this whole thing, it should work, which it does. So what this is doing is now, because this is greater than 25,000, it's take, sorry, less than 25,000, it's taken this number and just multiplying it by two. Now, what if we actually, what if I actually wanted to go ahead and set my own threshold in this to say, maybe I want it to be 35,000. That's easy enough to do. You go back into your Python file and you're gonna pass in another argument. And this, you're actually gonna define as Y. And now you're just gonna say if X is greater than Y, all right, then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and define my threshold. So we'll just do comma and we'll put it in, we'll say column E16. So I'll we'll go E16 and this way it doesn't change for anybody. So right now it's going to say this, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and put 25,000 and now it's going to go ahead and change that for me. So the beauty of this, like I said, it's your own custom defined function. You can put whatever you want in this function. It's completely going to be up to you. These are the flexibilities that if they are added in Excel, it's a lot of work because you're going to have to do a lot of if statements and all that other kind of stuff. And now if I were to go ahead and change this to 35,000 and this is going to update. So 34,553 is less than 35. So it's just going to multiply itself. This number is greater. So it's going to take a random number and just multiply it by 10. And so, like I said, this is a great way to actually start playing with functions. The last one I'm going to show you is just one that is going to be something that returns a complete string function. So let's say I want to, for whatever reason, I just want to have some text in there that I need to type in over and over again. Um, you can quickly just go and do something like equals my bio, put in as a function. It's just going to return text for me because that's what I put in. 
All right, so the other function I want to show you quickly, I've sort of changed this around a little bit, is you can actually go ahead and pass things, customize it as well. Um, so for example, if I wanted to return a string, say you've always got to return strings for whatever reason in Excel, it's like it's some kind of a branding, corporate branding or whatever it is, but there's a variable you want to go ahead and customize or you don't want to customize. You can do this either way. What you would do is you would go ahead and define something like, so what I want to do is I want to return my name is Sats and I've been a data scientist for X years and that's going to be basically we're using a formatted string here um, and I want to be able to define years so if I go back into Excel I hit import function I'm just going to hit that again and I would type in something like equals my bio and then let's say I want to say 15 years go ahead and do that and it's going to say my name is Sats and I've been a data scientist for 15 years so really cool stuff you can do the other one I want to show you that we're going to build together is a way to go ahead and calculate somebody's BMI alright so if I were to go ahead and do this in Excel let's say this is the data I have what you're going to do is you're going to take your weight in pounds which is going to be this times 2.2 and then you're going to multiply that by 703 and this is just a standard formula and they're going to divide that by your height in squared inches so we're going to go ahead and do something like divided by height to the power of two and so my bmi for this person is around 27 you copy that down all right it wasn't uber hard to do but you can always like i said rebuild this something like this in python and just keep going ahead and reusing this function everywhere else so you don't have to do that formula again so let's quickly do this. I just want to show you how fast and easy this is actually going to be. So I do something like this and I'm going to be taking in two parameters. So I'm going to say BMI and I'm going to be taking in your height and I'll be taking in your weight. And we'll just say the height is going to be in inches and the weight is going to be in kilograms. So we'll just make it simple. And we're just basically going to return this formula. So we're going to say 703 times your weight in pounds. So we're going to say weight times 2.2 we're going to take that entire thing and we're going to go ahead and divide it by your height squared so it's going to be your height and that's how you do squared in python and so it's really that simple save it we're going to go back we're going to import our function and now what we're going to see is over here we should just be able to see bmi so i'm just going to put in bmi i'm going to go ahead and put in my height comma put in my weight and that's it you get your BMI calculation that way so now you actually have a formula in Excel that you can continually use for your BMI the last one we're gonna do just because I want to really drive this home is we're gonna quickly convert temperature uh, from Celsius to Fahrenheit and really that's a quick calculation as well so we're gonna go to Python and this is also a great way to continue to practice your Python skills as well so we're gonna go here and we're gonna say cell to FH you are going to put in your Celsius and you're going to go ahead and convert it. Now, if I also wanted to go ahead while I was at this, define the other way around, and that is Fahrenheit to Celsius, I go ahead and copy paste, and I'll just do FH to cell, and we're going to go ahead and put an FH in here, and the formula is going to be a bit different, so now it's going to be FH minus 32, and it's going to be times 5 divided by 9. All right, so that's the equation. So now we have two different functions. We're going to go ahead and test these out. So we're going to go control S. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say import functions. And hopefully they should both be in here, but we're going to first test this one out. So I got a whole bunch of temperatures. We're going to go equals. We're going to go cell to Fahrenheit. It's right there. And this is the number we're going to put in. Okay, so this is the conversion. Now, if this works correctly, I actually don't need this over here. I'm just going to convert it back. And so now I'm going to go ahead and type in FH to cell, which is right there. And we're going to convert it back. And if we get the right answers, which looks like it worked. So there you go. So this is, like I said, great way to play around with this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.